In this prison for violent criminals, Jacob trains by lifting his cellmate who weighs over 100 kilograms. It's not because he has excess energy, but in this prison, only the ruthless can survive, while the weak become sacrifices. Today, I bring you a 2017 American crime film called Shot Caller. A few months ago, Jacob was still a successful businessman, well-known, with a beautiful wife and a well-behaved son. His career and family life were perfect. It was clear he was a well-to-do family man. But life doesn't always go as planned, and soon an unexpected event occurred. That night, Jacob met up with his close friends. After dinner and drinks, he was the one driving them home. The group's chatter distracted him, and he ran a red light, crashing into the car ahead. In that collision, one of his friends lost their life. Jacob was sentenced to 16 months in prison for driving under the influence. Although his sentence wasn't long, it changed his life forever. Upon entering prison, he saw a large cell holding over a hundred inmates. His lawyer had warned him beforehand that in this place, the weak are bullied and the strong are feared, so he must become indifferent. On his first night in prison, a black inmate, who had been terrified to tears during the day, had his mouth covered by a group of prisoners. They pinned him down. Jacob tried to block out the sounds, but the piercing noise lingered around him. It was then he realized his lawyer's words were true. The next morning, seeing the bullied inmate, Jacob made a firm decision, in the days to come, he would not show any weakness. But even if he didn't look for trouble, trouble found him. While outside for some fresh air, Jacob accidentally bumped into a big, intimidating guy, who started cursing him out. All eyes around immediately turned to him. The sudden incident left Jacob unsure of what to do. But he knew that if he showed fear now, he'd never gain respect later. So, he gritted his teeth and threw a punch, breaking the guy's mouth. The guards blew their whistles, warning all inmates to lie down but Jacob didn't stop. He slammed the big guy's head to the ground and kept beating him. Only when the guards sprayed him with pepper spray did he finally end the fight. Jacob's tough personality attracted the attention of Bottles, the leader of a local gang. He had Frank's shotgun call Jacob over and expressed that he liked his rebellious nature. However, the person Jacob had beaten was part of another gang. If he didn't want to face their revenge, he had no choice but to join Bottles' crew. Jacob got exactly what he wished for, but to join the white gang, he had to pass a test. The test involved smuggling a black ball filled with drugs out of the cell. Jacob had to avoid being searched by the guards and successfully get it out to the yard for fresh air. This wasn't an easy task, but it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that Jacob couldn't afford to miss. That night, while no one was watching, he used toothpaste as a lubricant, smeared it on the ball, and inserted it inside himself, enduring the pain. The next day, while outside for fresh air, he slipped into the restroom. With his crew covering for him, he retrieved the ball and handed it to Frank. Bottles was very pleased. At that moment, Jacob felt as happy as a father with a newborn. With the gang as his backing, he thought he wouldn't have to fear anyone anymore. But what Jacob didn't realize was that he had just stepped into a deep abyss. A few days later, Bottles came to find Jacob again. He ordered Jacob to kill a traitor who had exposed them. This mission had to succeed, failure was not an option. Jacob knew the consequences of refusing, so he had no choice but to comply. With the help of his crew, he restrained the traitor, and Jacob pulled out a makeshift dagger and stabbed him several times. This was Jacob's first time killing someone. He knew he could never turn back. In this prison, you either become a warrior or a victim. Once you choose to be a fighter, you must always maintain that status. After completing the mission, he was rewarded with a tattoo. In this prison, the number of tattoos represented one's rank. In the following days, Jacob gradually filled his body with tattoos. One day, Bottles had planned a riot. Their targets were the Mexican gang and the black gang. Before the action began, his crew reminded Jacob to stay out of sight of the cameras during the fight. Bottles ordered the members of the white gang to pull out their weapons, which they had hidden everywhere. Jacob also took out a sharpened toothbrush. The riot began. All the inmates jumped into a chaotic brawl. The guards blew their whistles and fired pepper spray, but the situation was already out of control. Jacob was ambushed from behind and pushed down to the ground. He pulled out his sharpened toothbrush and stabbed his attacker fiercely. The enemy was instantly taken out of the fight. Jacob turned and saw one of his crew fighting off three guys, while one tried to attack him from behind. Without a second thought, Jacob rushed in, tackled the attacker, and used a toothbrush to finish him off. The man he saved was incredibly grateful, but Jacob quickly realized a camera had captured the entire incident. He was charged with murder. Once again, the judge extended Jacob's sentence by ten years. Seeing the despair on his wife's face, Jacob knew his life was over. Soon after, he was transferred to maximum security, and his wife sent him divorce papers. In this prison, 
inmates were locked in cramped cells for 23 hours a day, with their one hour of outdoor time spent in a metal cage. They designed places like this to break men like us. In this place, Jacob encountered the man who was controlling the entire prison, known by the nickname The Beast. Not only did Bottles follow his orders, but most of the guards had also been bribed by him. His methods were extremely ruthless, to demonstrate his authority, he even sent his men to kill any guards who refused to comply. The Beast was highly impressed by Jacob's achievements and offered him a place in his gang. Welcome to the family, brother. As a result, Jacob's life in prison became much easier from this point. Quickly, the 10-year prison sentence came to an end, and he would be released the next day. However, that night, a guard handed Jacob a phone, and on the other end was the beast. He told Jacob that after his release, he needed him to help distribute a large quantity of weapons. Jacob initially wanted to refuse, he didn't want to continue engaging in illegal activities, but the beast threatened his family. With no other option, Jacob had to agree. After his release, Frank Shotgun sent an associate to pick up Jacob. Shotgun took him to a party to help him unwind and told him he could choose any girl inside. Suddenly, someone outside the window opened fire on them. Luckily, Jacob's quick reaction saved his life, but the girl he had just spoken to wasn't as fortunate. Right after his release, Jacob was ambushed, leading him to suspect that there was a mole in the gang. The only people who knew his whereabouts were Shotgun and the associate. Finding the answer was easy. Sure enough, after some surveillance, Jacob discovered Shotgun meeting privately with Kutcher, his parole officer. He had found the mole. With his family threatened and now being targeted by the police, Jacob was fed up with being pushed around. A plan formed in his mind. He went to the supermarket to buy gloves, a raincoat, and two knives. Arriving at Shotgun's house, he pretended to discuss the details of the deal. When Shotgun opened the door, Jacob unexpectedly lunged with a knife. After killing Shotgun, Jacob took his phone and deliberately sent a message detailing the weapons deal to Shotgun's phone. He then placed the phone in a visible spot. Soon after, Officer Kutcher arrived, discovered Shotgun's body, and noticed the phone. He read the message and quickly called his superiors. Why did Jacob reveal this information? Because he was crafting an outcome he desired. On the day of the weapons deal, upon learning the location, he immediately sent the coordinates to that phone. After Kutcher read the message, unsure of its accuracy, he still gathered his team and began heading to the deal's location. Jacob met with the buyer, who laid a bag of cash on the ground. He instructed his men to drive in the truck carrying the weapons. As the money and weapons appeared, the hidden police began to act. Under heavy fire, the gang had no choice but to surrender. Jacob was once again arrested and sent back to prison. During the prosecution process, Kutcher approached Jacob. He had figured out that the crucial information was intentionally leaked by Jacob. Kutcher promised that if Jacob revealed who was behind everything, he would be set free. However, Jacob refused without hesitation. His plan was not yet complete, and the safety of his family was still not secured. This time, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. As soon as Jacob returned to prison, the beast immediately summoned him. The beast wasn't a fool, he figured out why Jacob had betrayed him. I gave you a gift, and you spit in my face. When your old lady and kid are lying in blood, and you get to live with knowing you're the cause. They were the very reason Jacob had come back. Now, he had to carry out the final step of his plan. When the guard tried to escort him back, Jacob unexpectedly pulled out a razor blade from his mouth. He had smuggled it into the prison the same way he had with the drug-filled balloon. Jacob grabbed the guard by the neck, forcing him to toss his radio aside. Then, he locked the guard in a steel cage. This time, Jacob was ready for a life-or-death showdown with the beast. Jacob unlocked the beast's cage, and the two engaged in a brutal fight. Although the beast was bigger, Jacob had the advantage of a weapon. In the end, the beast's artery was severed, and he bled out. To emerge as the ultimate victor, Jacob had plunged into darkness from the moment he entered this prison, sinking deeper and deeper. He finally understood that the only way to escape the abyss was to take control of everything. Now, he had become the leader of the prison. No one could ever threaten his family again. The movie ends here. What do you think about this film? Do you agree with Jacob's decisions in the movie? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get updates whenever we release a new video. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.